Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome back to Bar Such a Week. And today we're going to be talking about the fifth book in the Barsetshire Chronicles by Anthony Trollope, which is my favourite, and that is The Amazing at the Small House at Allington. Chapter 1. The Squire of Allington. Of course there was a great house at Allington. How otherwise should there have been a small house? Our story will, as its name imports, have its closest relations with those who lived in the less dignified domicile of the two. But it will have close relations also with the more dignified, and it may well be that I should, in the first instance, say a few words as to the great house and its owner. So the small house of Allington is my favourite book in the Barchester Chronicles by a long way and it's also one of my favourite books of all time. It was my favourite book of last year and I just... it's the first Victorian book that I've read for the first time as a adult rather than a teenager which has made it onto like my best books ever list, if you see what I mean. Like a lot of my favourite Victorian books are ones that I read as a teenager and I've reread since but it's been a long time since I read them for the first time and this was the first one in many years that I read and I was like yes. This is utterly incredible. Um, I love it a lot. It's my favourite in the series and it's just, oh, it's so good. It's so great. It's so great. I'm going to be fairly vague with my plot summary because there's quite a lot of stuff that I don't want to give away. And one of the things I love about this book is that it's quite twisty and turny and I did not predict anything. Like, it's so unpredictable in such a beautiful, wonderful way. And I did not, like, from the beginning of the book, I did not see where it was going. If you have this Penguin Classics edition, please do not read the blurb. Just don't, don't look at the back, don't look at the back, because it will spoil quite a lot of the book for you. Um, it distresses me when classics do that. One of the reasons now I have taken to reading a lot of classics on Kindle for my first read is that I then don't have a blurb that spoils half the plot for me, because a lot of publishers of classics do seem to give away rather a lot in the physical editions, which is a shame. The best way for me to describe the plot without giving too much away is that it's a bit like Sense and Sensibility, but much better. Much as I love Jane Austen and much as I enjoy Sense and Sensibility, there are quite a lot of things that this book has in common with Sense and Sensibility that this book does so, so much better and so much more realistically, I guess. Basically, this book starts with the small house at Allington and the great house at Allington. At the great house at Allington lives the squire. He's unmarried and he has two sort of sets of younger relations. He has his heir, who is his nephew Bernard, and then he has two nieces on the other side, so they're cousins of Bernard, Lily Dale and Belle Dale. Belle and Lily live with their mother in the small house at Allington and their uncle kind of provides for them, but their uncle doesn't get on that well with their mother, even though he loves Lil and Belle dearly, and it's the greatest hope of his heart that Belle will marry her cousin Bernard and go on to inherit the estate and sort of carry on the family line. Though Belle is not necessarily that keen on the idea, partly because of the existence of a young doctor who lives nearby. And then at the beginning of the book we're introduced to Bernard's close friend, Aldophus Crosby, who comes down to Allington with Bernard and he meets Lily Dale and the two are immediately drawn together. But there's another young man who is also in love with Lily Dale called Johnny Eames, who is like my favourite character in all of Anthony Trollope. Okay, must keep calm about this amazing book. Everything goes on from there. Like I said, I do not want to give too much away about the plot, but it basically follows the romantic entanglements of these young people. And we follow sort of Lily and Belle's lives and relationships in Allington and we also follow Johnny Eames in London and Crosby in various different places. To try and talk about the things I love about this is quite hard because one of the things I love about it is that it has like the best ending. The best ending. It has a brilliant ending. I wonder, I spoke a few days ago about how one of the reasons why I don't love Dr Thorne as much as a lot of other people do is that for me it's quite predictable because it's quite a conventional Victorian novel and because I've read lots of Victorian novels I kind of knew what was going on from the beginning but one of the things I love about this which I think means I love it more than maybe you would if you don't read that much Victorian literature is that it's really unconventional and that it just like breaks all the things that should be happening and you could just like hear the Victorian public like screaming Anthony Trollope to do things he's like no that's not what I'm gonna do um it's so great it's really unconventional it's really unpredictable like I was on the edge of my seat, I did not know how everything was going to go down and it's heart-wrenching in places. It's kind of the saddest and the most serious of the series in some places but it's also really funny and it's also brilliant and it, at times like I said it's heart-wrenching because there are times when these characters get so close to being happy and just make the wrong decisions but you understand why and all of the characters like there are some characters in here who are dislikable but also likable at the same time in a great balance of kind of you feel sorry for them but also what the hell are they doing like it's so good it's a different Victorian novel like that's what I can't stress enough about this as someone who has read a lot of Victorian literature and loves a lot of Victorian literature if Dickens had been given the first three quarters of this book he would have given it a different ending 
And I'm glad that Anthony Trollope wrote it. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Oh, it's so hard to explain without discussing what the ending is, but I think it's beautiful and brilliant and so great. It's the best, it's the best, it's so good. I love it, I love it a lot, I love it a lot. So, actual specifics. I want to talk a bit about the characterization um, in this book because I think it is Anthony Trollope's at its best. I love the relationship between Lily and her sister Belle. They are a little bit like Marianne and Eleanor in Sense and Sensibility, in that Lily, the younger daughter, is more like Marianne, she is more passionate, but she's also more clever and more sensible and more self-critical and self-aware than Marianne. Belle, the elder sister, is sort of quieter and less lively than Lily, but a bit like Eleanor, she is potentially more sensible, but I think they are more complicated and sort of fully fledged characters in a way than Eleanor and Marianne. Not that I mean to like hate on Jane Austen, I love Jane Austen a lot. Sense and Sensibility is my least favourite one by her, but I, I still love it a lot. But it's just, it's just everything like pales in comparison to this book. Not everything, but a lot of things. Anyway, anyway, I think Crosby and Bernard are really well done as well. Crosby is one of those fascinating characters who I wanted to like shake a lot in this book, but I also kind of understood in moments too, in a way that I think is very powerfully and brilliantly done. And his sort of plot trajectory and his character development over the course of the book and the way things develop in terms of what he wants and what his life goals are is so interestingly and brilliantly well done. And in a way I think you can see similar things about him to Mark Roberts in that kind of division of what do you want in life? Do you want happiness or do you want status? But my favourite character in the book is possibly Johnny Eames, who is just a wonderful, wonderful character. He is this young man who is desperately in love with Lily, has been for a long time. He grew up with her, knows her well, and he's gone to London to work as a clerk in the civil service. He hasn't paid very much, he lives in this boarding house with a few crazy people, including the landlady's daughter. Johnny Eames is an interesting character, and in a way, I think, although the book can be read in many ways as a kind of love story, it can also be read, I think, as a coming-of-age story for John Eames. And Anthony Trollope at the beginning of the book describes John Eames as being a hobbledehoy, <laughs> so a kind of young man who doesn't really know his place in the world yet. He's quite unsophisticated and unsure of himself, quite clumsy, quite awkward, but is kind of coming into his manhood, as opposed to Aldolphus Crosby, who is described as an Apollo who comes across as very, very confident. And the kind of juxtaposition and um, comparisons between John Eames and Crosby are really, really interesting, especially because I think Anthony Trollope's heart is with John Eames, um, and John Eames is a really, really fascinating character in this book and also in the next, and I think the exploration of his life and his kind of character development and his growth is really, really interesting. Another thing I love about this book is that half of it is set in Allington in Barsetshire and half of it is set in London with John Eames and sometimes Crosby and looks quite a lot of their work in the civil service, which is just something I find really interesting. And Anthony Trollope was in the civil service, so you know that he knows his stuff. If you didn't know, Anthony Trollope worked for the postal office and in fact was the person who invented the post box because, you know, that's how cool a writer he was. I also love the exploration of kind of family and family relationships and conflicts in this, especially the relationship between the squire and his nieces and the squire and Mrs Dale, the Lily and Belle's mother, who he kind of has a complicated, difficult relationship with. The squire is an interesting character. In some ways he has something in common with Lady Lufton in Family Parsonage in that he has particular ideas of what he wants to happen in the world and he doesn't really understand why things don't go as he plans. He doesn't always understand the effect of his actions on others, but nor does it occur to him that others might have influences other than himself. In this book we also stumble across a aristocratic family called the de Courcys, which we encountered previously in Dr Thorne. They're sort of cousins of the Greshambury's, I believe, and they're all really interestingly painted as well, and the kind of juxtaposition of their lives with the Squire of Allington's and the kind of differences in upper-class behaviour is really interesting to note as well. In general I just can't recommend this book enough its emotional engagement is incredible. It is a beautiful, moving, powerful book. I read this on a plane and I cried and I didn't care because that's how like emotionally involved I was in this book. It is beautifully written and wonderful. I think the ending is perfect and Anthony Trollope like teases you with moments of happiness and then like drops them away. This and the last book I would say are probably the most serious in the series and it makes it so powerful and so utterly wonderful and I just I can't recommend it enough. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant book and like even if the rest of the series weren't any good, it would be worth reading the first four to get to this one. Luckily they are all brilliant, so you can go read the whole series and get up to this number five. I love it so much. It's beautiful and incredible and like a brilliant, 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 wonderful book. Thank you very much for watching. Do let me know down in the comments if you've read The Small House at Allington and what you thought of it. Now we're back tomorrow to talk about the last book in The Chronicles of Barchester, and that is The Last Chronicle.